What is going on everybody? My name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. In today's video, we're going to create a smart assistant like device using web technologies. This is an older video that I had to delete because the intro was far too long, but some of you might find it interesting or useful. So here it is. Anyway, let's have a look at the demo before we begin. Gorilla Hub, show weather. Gorilla Hub, navigate home. The APIs that we will be using today include YouTube API, Open Weather API, and the Unsplash API. For the transitions of the subscriber account, we will be using the Audio Meter JS, and for the voice command, we will be using Anyang. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I upload weekly web development and design videos just like this. Like the video, and if you have any questions, please comment below. Now let's jump on the computer and get started. I've created a new project and I've opened the project in Visual Studio Code, but of course you can use your favorite editor. I'm also using for this project the Live um, Server, which is basically a development local server that allows me every time I save a document to refresh the page automatically. So I don't have to press F5 or reload the page manually. That's all. Next thing we need to have a look at is our folder structure. This is not so important, but I've organized uh, everything in folders. So our styles will be under the CSS folder and I've created an empty styles.css file. Then I have an images folder and inside the images folder, I've downloaded an image from unsplash.com, which I will link in the description below. Then we have the JS folder, which will hold obviously all the JavaScript files, but at the moment it's empty. We'll focus on this later on. I've also zoomed in quite a lot so you can see a little bit better. And now that we are ready, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is open index.html and make sure that we have the styles.css open. Then I'm going to close the explorer so it doesn't get in the way. And now we can start building the HTML file. First of all, Let's create a new HTML5 um, document and let's give it a name. Then let's make sure that our styles.css is linked to this document. To do this, inside the header of our website, we can just do a link with CSS and then the folder for me is called CSS and then the file of styles.css is inside. Now that we are done with this, the next thing I want to do is include a font, a custom font. The custom font that I want to include is called Work Sans, and you can find this font under fonts.google.com. So let's select this font. This will pop up. Then we can go to customize, and then we can select the font weights that we want. So in this case, I'm going for regular and bold. That's all I want. And then we can go to embed and we have two options. The standard option, which we can put in our HTML and the import option, which you can put in your CSS. Let's go for the standard option, copy this link and paste it in the head of your HTML file. So this should do the job. The next thing I want to do before we close this page is copy the CSS rules for this. So we don't forget. Okay, I can close this now and focus on building the rest. So let's start by building a few of the elements here. And the first element I want to create is a wrapper. This will be a div element with the class of wrapper. And basically this will wrap all of our elements. So inside here, we will have a few sections. So let's create two sections and basically each section will be in um, each section will be an individual screen. So each section will take the full width of the browser and the full height of the browser. So when we start, you probably won't see the second section. And this is how I'm going to do the pages. But of course, if you like, you can create separate HTML files that would also work. For some people, it might be uh, better to create separate files just so your workspace is cleaner, but uh, this is not gonna going to be so complicated. So I think one file is actually a better option for me. So the first section will be my home page. This will entail um, having the time, the YouTube 
uh, subscribers, the notifications, and so on. So let's give it a unique identifier and let's just call it home. Let's call it what it is. And then the second one, I will give an ID of weather. And you're now probably wondering when, well, right, why didn't you just put the weather inside the home? I could have done that, uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, what we can do with the voice API. And uh, we just, I just wanted to come up with a few sections. And I did come up with another section, which was the, like giving you inspirational quotes, but I'm not a big fan of it. So let's stick to something else and we can always change it and improve it later on if we have to. So let's space them out a little bit and focus on one section at a time. So first of all, we'll focus on the home. So before we focus on the home section, let's start by writing some styles and we'll hop over to the uh, HTML and we'll have to pop, um, we'll have to go backwards and forwards as we build the layout, just so you get a clear understanding of what we are doing step by step. So first of all, let's open the styles.css and let's reset a few things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to ensure that element, every element on this website has the book, the box sizing set to border box. So or padding and width don't get uh, mixed up. So we don't get any problems with the paddings and the widths. The next thing I want to do is because we, uh, we're having multiple sections and basically once we're gonna have to scroll one, from one section to another, I want to make sure that the scroll is actually smooth. To do this, we can actually use the uh, scroll behavior element. So let's go for HTML and inside here we can do scroll behavior and we can just put this to smooth. Hopefully this will give us the smooth scroll um, scroll behavior. And uh, we can revisit this later on if it doesn't work, but that should hopefully work. The next thing I want to focus on is the body. Let's reset a few things. So first of all, I want to make sure that there is no margins or padding or anything like that. So let's go for margin zero and padding zero. Then the next thing I want to do is obviously paste the font family, which we copied earlier, and you can use your own font if you like. I'm also going to set up some sort of a background color. This is not, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And the next thing I want to do is add a nice image for the background. So we can do background image URL and inside the URL, the image folder will be dot dot images. And my image is called SF1, which stands for San Francisco. So let's save this and see whether uh, this is working so far. Okay, so the automatic reload did, did not work for me, but let's start the live server again. And okay, that seems to work now. So as you can see, we have San Francisco, but I want the image to cover the screen a little bit better. So what we can do is go back to the CSS and just do background image, sorry, background size. And we can set this to cover. So when we save this, you'll see I don't know why the live reload isn't working anymore. Close my browser and try it again. Okay, hopefully the live reload will work so I don't have to refresh automatically all the time. So as you can see, the image is now a lot better. It's taking the full screen and this will work for all sorts of sizes. The next thing we need to focus is the wrapper, which will wrap all of our elements. So let's do that. Wrapper, we already know that it's a class. And then I want to ensure that the wrapper is always taking the 100% of the view width. And I want to ensure that it's taking the 100% of the view height. The next thing I want to make sure is that the wrapper, obviously we need to hide the overflow. I don't want any scroll bars or anything like that. So we can just do overflow hidden. Save this and see what we have. No scroll bars, but obviously in the section, we don't have anything yet. So let's now focus on the sections. So for the sections, I'm just going to give um, create a global section styles. And for the section, first of all, I want to make sure that they are positioned relative. And then I want to create some 
padding around so we give it this we give it a little bit of white space and the application looks a little bit more professional so let's put something like padding like 1m and you can use whatever unit you like percentages pixels m's rems whatever is comfortable for you so the width for the sections i want to ensure that they are also 100 percent of the view width and I want to do the same with the height, 100% view height. The next thing here I want to ensure is that each section has the font size of 3M. This is basically making the font size a little bit bigger. Uh, and we could have done this in the body actually, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we only have not but it doesn't really matter. This project is purely for fun, so we can do whatever we like. So now that we have the section, let's have a look where everything is working yep everything seems to be looking good and let let me explain what the plan is i want to develop this website or application whatever you want to call it um, i want to make it very easy for the elements to be positioned around i want i want the sections to be reusable and we can do this very easily with grid so what i want to do is this page i want to create one column which is taking the full width of this uh, section. Obviously we have a little bit of padding if we inspect it. You, you can see the padding here. So I want the, the section uh, to take full width, sorry, the column to take full width. And I also want to create three rows, which we can position elements into. So we can have a top row, middle row and bottom row. So let's do that. So inside this section, we can actually convert this into a grid. So display grid. And by the way, you can do this uh, in so many ways. You don't have to do it with grid. You can use flex, Flexbox and so on. But grid makes it quite easy and it's a good thing to learn, I guess. So let's create a column. So first of all, we need to do grid template columns. And for this, we can do one fraction of the screen. So we only have one grid, sorry, one column. Then what I want to do is do grid template rows. And this time I want to use the repeater, which means we can put I want three rows and those three rows will be one fraction each. Okay. And let me show you what this does. So here, if you are using Firefox and I'm, uh, I'm sure some of the other browsers have the same option, you can see this little tiny grid icon. If we click on it, you will see that our grid is now split into three sections. One column, three sections. One, two, three. So the next thing I want to do is name those sections so we can make the position of our elements a little bit easier. And we can position them something like top, middle or bot and bottom, or we can just give them a name of A, B, C, whatever you like. Let's do this with A, B, C just because it's less to type, I guess. So we can create a grid template and our template will go like this. So the first row will be called A, the second row will be called B and let me, let me do this and the third row will be called C and actually we don't probably need this as it's the last element or we can do it here. Now if you go back Now, you actually won't see the names, but this now should be A, B, and C. This means that we can now position any, uh, we can now position the elements. Uh, this also allows us to put our HTML element in, uh, in an order that we like. So it, they don't have to be organized from top to bottom or anything like that. We can do whatever we like and then just assign them a letter. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, Let's start by uh, creating the time and the notifications. So let's create a div with the ID of time. So this will be our current time. And just for the demo, let's copy the current time from my PC and this will be 1909. And let's also create another one. Uh, and let's create it below just so you see what's happening. So div ID, and this could be all notifications. And most of these will be replaced with JavaScript later on. 
So let's see what happens now. So as you can see, we have the time at the top, notifications uh, here in the second row. So they each take in a row. And by the way, let me first um, change the color super quick, quickly as well. Uh, if we go back to the body and just set the color to be white, so it looks a little bit better. Okay, that's good. Yeah, okay, this is looking better. So now we obviously want to position the time to be um, at the bottom. Uh, that's how I want it. The, so we want to move this at the bottom and want, we want to move notifications here at the top. The way we can do this is by using the grid template. So let me show you how and then we can start the elements individually after. So first of all, let's pick up the time. So for the time, we can assign a grid area. And we know that uh, we want to assign the time to be at the bottom and the bottom one is called C. So let's assign it there. And also let's assign the notifications in here. And we know that the grid area for notifications is going to be one as that's the top. So let's see what happens when we save this. As you can see, if we turn on the grid, the time is now uh, in the bottom um, row and the notification is the top row, which is awesome. So we can continue positioning elements like this. And as of course, we have another section below, which you can't see yet, but this is kind of like a grid, which we, which we can reuse and simplify our layout. So let's go back and do some styling. So first of all, for the time, obviously I want it to be at the bottom. And so I want it to be always on the left side and I want it to be here in the bottom. And to do this, we can go back to the time element and justify self, we can set to left, which means it's going to be on the left side always. And we can align self to be um, end. So let's see if this works. Okay, this seems to work. Also, by the way, you can use Flexbox or whatever you like. Even if you wanted to use a uh, position absolute, that would uh, do the job too. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing here is the line height is a little bit more than I would like. I would like it to be roughly down the line, but that's just a minor, I guess. And we can reset this uh, 0 0.8. Oh. 0.7 seems to be okay. Okay, this seems good actually. Um, okay, let's do that. The next thing I want to make, ensure is that the time is a little bit bolder. So let's do font uh, weight set to 700, which is the bold. And I think we're pretty much done with time. So let's have a look how it looks. Okay, this looks good to me. Obviously we can give it a shadow if you want to change it to a bright image and so on. But these are slight design changes that we can always work on. The next thing let's focus on is the notifications. So for the notifications, we have to do the same. It's already at the top. So all we have to do is here is justify self and so it's going to position it at the end. Let's do that. Justify self and and bam, the notification is on the top right corner. But obviously let's give this a little bit of style because those notifications look too big for me. So let's just make it ever so slightly smaller. And this could be 0 0.5 and let's have a look. Okay, this looks good to me. It doesn't take too much space. It's nice. The next thing I want to do is the demo. So I'm going to have some sort of a demo saying, uh, showing what you can say to the Gorilla Hub. And I'm not exactly sure what to call this element, but let's call it a demo. Div ID demo. And the demo will be something like say, um, Gorilla Hub show weather. And also because we are assigning those elements, assigning them to the grid template, they don't, it doesn't really matter how they're positioned. I can position this at the top and, um, and as you can see, there won't be any different. The, the element is still assigned to A and C. So let's bring them back just because it looked tidier like this. And 
we need to style the demo. Let's go back to style CSS and create a demo. And for the demo, we obviously want, I wanted the demo to be at the bottom, which is number C. And I want to justify it uh, and align it to um, the right, right bottom, basically. Let's do that. So first of all, we need to give it the grid area of this will be C, ABC, and justify self will be end, and align items will be set to end as well. Let's make the font size a little bit smaller as well as we are here. The font size can be 0.5M, and let's make sure that this is set to italic, so font style italic. And let's make the opacity a little bit down as this is not so important. So I don't need, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to look too obvious. So something one, 0 0.6 might do the job. Okay, I've made a mistake. Instead of um, align self, I've done align items, which is wrong. So let's save this and have a look. Okay, now we have the gorilla. Uh, say gorilla help, show weather. And I'm not going to do this, but uh, that might be a challenge for you. It would be pretty cool to have uh, this change with the options that you can say. And you can do this with JavaScript or just like do some CSS magic, but I won't be focusing on this. I'm just gonna focus on the other element. So the next element that we want to um, do is the YouTube counter. I want the YouTube counter to be in the middle of this page right here in section B. Let's do that. So first of all, we need to obviously create the HTML elements and I can just create them in here as the order doesn't matter. So we can give it a diff ID of subscri subscription counter. So sub, sub count and inside here uh, we'll have another two elements. The first one will be a diff of ID and let's say sub count title. So copy this sub count. Oh, copy this sub count and this one's go title. And this will be where our title will go. So YouTube. So my YouTube subscribers. And then we're going to have another div with another ID. And this is where the actual number will come. So let's do sub count number. Okay, and for now, let's put just like a dummy number. Um, okay, and let's have a look at what we have. So as you can see, uh, this is actually um, going to the second template, the, um, number B, but uh, I want to position it properly. So let's do that. I want to position it and style it properly. So let's do that. Let's go back to um, the styles. I'll copy this to help myself a little bit. So sub count, we need to set it to the grid um, area of B. And then I want to justify self to center. And then I also want to align um, self to center. And last but not least, let, let's see how this looks. Okay, last but not least, I want to ensure that this text is always aligned uh, in the middle. So text align center. Let's save this. And actually that works quite well. Here is so you can see the grid. Okay, so let's style the top bit first and the top bit is the sub count title. So we can either do it like this, sub count and then title. I think this should do the job and we can just, I don't know, let's change the font uh, size actually to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 M. Okay, let's have a look. So the title is a little bit smaller and it would be cool if I put a little bit of a um, drop shadow of this, but maybe we can do that later. The number seems to be okay. We might need to add some styles for the number later on. Okay, so far so good, but we also need to do the uh, weather section. So let's um, select this for a second and uh, just comment it out so we can uh, view the weather section. And inside the weather section, we are going to have 
just like, I don't know, a weather icon and a background image and stuff like that. And we can build this uh, later on as well, but let's uh, quickly build something super, uh, just for now. First of all, let's create a div with the ID of weather stuff or just weather. Okay, weather stuff, just so we don't duplicate the ID from there. And in the weather stuff, we're just gonna have to add a bunch of stuff. Let's, we'll have a, a div with a class of uh, weather icon. And then this will be our icon. I'm just gonna do a dummy one here. And then we're gonna have another div with a class of weather title. And weather, okay. That should do the job, let's see what we have. Okay, we obviously need to position this in the middle of the page. So let's do that super quickly. So we need to position weather stuff. And because section is a global one, this is a global one, it's kind of like we've created this template. I can use the same template. So what I can do is do weather stuff, grid, area, and that would be B. So let's have a look. Okay, we're already here in the middle, which is great. And we also need to center line this just like we did here, I think. So let's do that. Justify cell center, align self center, uh, text. Huh? Text align center, everything center. And I also want the text uh, now text transform uh, to be capitalized. So all the letters are big. Okay. Later on, we will get the icon from an API and we'll get the weather from the same API. I'm probably not gonna focus too much on this, but I will bring the data just to show you how easy it is. And now the next thing we need to um, ensure is that the two pages, the animation between the two pages works. So let's do that. But first of all, uh, the way I'm going to do this is with anchor points. I think this is probably the easiest way without writing any JavaScript. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do in the each section, I will create a link and let's give it an ID of, okay, now let's give it a class name because it's gonna be used multiple times. Test link, that doesn't matter. It's just for testing purposes, really. And then we're gonna have to create the link in here. So H ref and the link we will do in a second. So this one will be, or we are at the home section and we want to create a link to the weather. So let's create an anchor for the weather and um, with, you can uh, create, you can link anchors with the, what is it called, hashtag? I don't know what is the original name anymore because the hashtag, but let's put anchor weather, that would do. Uh, but, uh, now we need to actually create the anchor point. And uh, I'm going to create the anchor just outside the this section. So let's do that. And that's uh, a name. And the name will be this anchor weather. Okay. And okay. Do we need to close anchors? But uh, also now I need to um, say where the weather, where this links are going to be on the page, because as you can see, it's like, it's somewhere in here and it's pushing up the time. So let's uh, quickly do that. So test link, let's give it a style. And for this, let's give it, oh, let's give it the grid area of A and justify content to be start. Uh, let's just give it a font font size of 0.5 and okay, let's see how this looks. And that's okay. So now if we click on this, you see that the uh, that we've gone to the weather. But uh, I've noticed something that the animation didn't work, which isn't good. And also I need to add a link back to uh, the weather to home. So I need to create another anchor. 
in here. And for this, uh, let's call it the same. So anchor home, and I can actually copy this link, paste it inside here, and just change the anchor home. Oh. Okay, so this will be go better, and this will be go home. So if you click go home, it goes to home, and if we click go weather, it goes to weather. And this is how our application will work, but obviously we're gonna have to hide this, and this will be done automatically on voice. Now, the first thing I'm noticing is that the animation is not working, and this is not good. I think the reason for this is because I probably have to do the scroll behavior smooth to either the body or the wrapper. Let me check the wrapper because that might be it. Okay. Okay, so I put, uh, because the wrapper is actually scrolling, I think. Yes, because the wrapper is actually scrolling, we need to put the scroll behavior in here instead. So we probably don't need this now. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, okay. So as you can see, the animation is super smooth, works really well. We didn't have to write any complicated JavaScript which is a win-win here. So far, so good. The next thing that we need to do is start doing the JavaScript. Obviously, we're gonna have to bring a YouTube API, we're gonna have to do a little clock and so on. First of all, let's go, we're probably done with the styles for now, but uh, let's go to index.html. And first of all, we need to create our JavaScript file. So let's link our JavaScript here at the bottom, and we'll probably need to link a few APIs as well, but maybe we can do this uh, later on. So first of all, let's bring our script, and we can do source, and the source for this will be JS, and let's call it script.js. I think that should be okay. And obviously we need to create the file inside the folder here. Script.js. Okay, now that we've created this, open the script.js and we can start writing our application. So first of all, shall we do the time? Let's do the time. So we know that the time is has the idea of time, <clears throat> excuse me. And also we can probably remove this now. Let's remove it and yeah, okay. Now let's open scripts.js and get started. So let's, uh, let's do the time super quickly. And for this, I'm gonna do an interval which will be set to uh, one second. So let's do set interval and so I want this interval to run every second. And to do this, we can do, oh, we can put one second in here and hopefully this should work, uh, this should run every second. Let's create the date. And for this, I'm gonna use let, I'm gonna create a new variable with let uh, today equals a new date. And then I'm going to do let uh, age for hours equals today dot get, um, get hours is what we want to get. And then I want to get the minute. And to do this, I can do let minutes equals today dot get minutes. And then I want the two dots. I don't know what you call them. I want the two dots in between the time. So it will be something like, for example, we have a 1935. So I want the two dots. And to do this, we can do something like let, um, let time equals H plus, then I need the two dots and then plus the minutes. So that should give us the, ta the hour, the two dots in the middle and the minutes. And then what we have to do is we need to, uh, we need to insert this data, this data into the document. And to do this, we can do document get um, element by ID. And the ID that we need to get is um, time. Now that we get the time element, then we need to inner HTML. So inner HTML means we need a um, we're inserting this into the HTML. So let's insert time into the HTML and save. 
8K. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, this actually worked. It refreshes every second now. And if I was to do console login here, uh, of time is ticking, we will see in the console that every second, oh, a millisecond, uh, we are getting, yeah, you will see that uh, the time is working. Now let's remove this actually. I think this is, is, I think this is a millisecond, isn't it? So I think that, yeah, sorry. And if you wanted to make it a second, it's basically one with three zeros. One problem that we will run into is when we have a lower number than 10. So we probably won't get the zero. So we'll have, so basically I want to have zero in front of the nine when the number is less than 10. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see now, but let's fix it because I already know that this is going to happen. Let's just fix it. I want to create, let's create a function first of all, and the function will be called check time. We're gonna pass, we're gonna pass something in this function, a number, and we can just call it i for now. And let's say if i is less than 10, what I want to do is I want to make sure that i is equals the string zero plus the number. And you will see what I mean. And then we obviously need to return i. Turn i. Okay, so now every time, every time get minutes is less than 10. So for example, eight or nine, it's gonna check. And if it is, it's gonna add zero to it. And then what we have to do is obviously do m equals check time. And we need to pass the time. Okay, so unfortunately you won't be able to see it now, but we'll have a look later. Hopefully this will work for us. Now that we are done with the time, we can move on to the next one. So the next thing I want to focus on is the notification. For me, I wanted uh, a notification that says something like, I don't know, for example, around me every Friday the bids get collected. And I'm one of them people that always forgets about it. So let's do a notification about Friday. And today happens to be Friday. Let's do that super quickly. So obviously you can have also, you can create a notification for yourself. And I'm also thinking of including like a new comments notification, like from YouTube, but I don't want to do that right now. We'll see when we get the YouTube API. Maybe I can show you how to do that too. So let's do that. First of all, let's do notifications. Okay, let's do the notifications function now. And this will be fairly simple as well. So let's do a function. And I'm going to call this function get weekday. And then inside here, we're going to use the uh, date class. Uh, and for this, let's create a variable called new date and then we can do equals new date this is how we get the date and for the date let's do to let, let today let's get today and we can get today by having the new date dot get day just like we got the time and then i want to um, get the notifications ID. So let's do that. Let notification message. Let's create a variable that is going to select the notification ID, which is this one. So let's do let notification message is equals document dot get element by ID. And the element that we want to get is notifications. And then after this, now the dates, sorry, the days come as numbers uh, from here. So one will be Monday, two, two will be Tuesday, three will be Wednesday and so on. Obviously at this case, I know that um, five is, is equals uh, Friday. And I just want to know when is Friday. So I get a notification, get the bins out. So let's do that. So I can do if today is equals five, then I want the notification message to be, uh, we need to insert it into the HTML and then I want the message to be get the bin out dot 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 
Okay, so if it's Friday, we're not getting anything. And obviously this isn't working because we need to run the function. So let's do that in here. Save. And as you can see, it says get the bin, get the bin out, which is great. Okay, if we go back, obviously I want to do an else. If it's not Friday, I just want to display something else. So at this stage, I just want to say no new notifications. So notification message will be in a HTML. No new, no new notifications. Okay, save this and let's have a look. So obviously it's Friday, so we're gonna get get the bins out. But if it wasn't Friday, let's say if it was Thursday, we're gonna get no new notifications, which is great. And obviously you can um, create more notifications for yourself. You can uh, instead of um, that you can use cases, case and so on to create multiple ones. Uh, but for this example, I think this is fine. All I want is a notification to want to get the bins out. And this is fairly cool so far. The next big thing is the, the YouTube subscriber stuff. So obviously uh, we're gonna have to go and create YouTube API. So let's do that. Okay, let's do that. So, okay, so I had to pause and this is the second day of uh, me recording this tutorial. So that's why the date has changed and obviously the time, but let's continue with doing the YouTube subscribers. Now, the first thing that we need to do is get the OD Omit uh, uh, API and you can find this um, in github and the url would be in the description below it's github.hubspot.com audio meter and uh, let me show you so if we go to you can either uh, by basically they uh, if you read the documentation you can see that you can use this with uh, simple javascript and uh, also you can use it with jquery quite easily and they give you some advanced uh, settings but uh, i'll walk you through this it's fairly easy to set up. So first of all, make sure you uh, you go to the download. Uh, you can download this folder, or if you go to GitHub, let's see where it is. If you go on GitHub, the only two files that we'll need is this uh, minified JavaScript, audiometer.min.js, and the other file that we will need is the default CSS, which I'm trying to find now, so themes. And uh, we'll need the audio meter dash theme dash default.css. So download those two files and let's include them in our project. So I'm gonna go back and um, as I as I said, I've already downloaded them. So I'm just going to include the CSS in here. Link style sheet and the style sheet that I want to link is under CSS audio meter dash theme dash default.css. Um, we don't need the slash. Then uh, the next thing that I need to do is include the audio meter class name uh, in here. And by the way, you can check all these things under the API. So class audio meter is where uh, your number will be. So we need to add this. And also we need to include the JavaScript somewhere around here. JS, and I'm not too sure whether this might need to be above the uh, or JS file, so let's do it like this. Okay, this should do the job. We're now set up and we are ready to write the uh, subscription count JavaScript. So let's navigate to the JavaScript JS file. And here is where we're going to start writing the JavaScript stuff. Now, first of all, we're going to need a YouTube API key and also a username that we want to uh, get some details from. So let's create two variables. First one is going to be 
uh, YouTube key and this is where we're going to paste the YouTube key and I'm going to show you how to get that as well. And the second one is going to be the YouTube username. And this will be the username which uh, the username ID which we which I will show you how to get as well. So first of all, let's get the YouTube key. To get the YouTube key, I will put the link in the description below. But to get the YouTube key, you have to go under HTTPS um, column slash slash console dot developers dot Google dot com slash APIs slash library. So this is the link, ignore all this. And the thing that you want to, obviously you will need a Google account, sign up, it's free. And you can make, uh, there are obviously limited calls that you can make and then you can pay for more if you like. Uh, but today we're going to use the free API calls. So let's go. So the thing that you're gonna look for is YouTube, obviously. And the API that we need is YouTube Data API V3. Let's click on this and I've already enabled mine but you're gonna have a big blue button here saying enable just click on that and that should lead you to some sort of a dashboard like this and if you don't have any projects yet it'll probably ask you to create a new project and you can create a new project uh, under clicking on here the top bit and just adding a new project so now that you've added a new project your your dashboard should look something like this but let me remove my credentials so you can so i can uh, show you exactly how it will how it will look so so once you create a project this is how your dashboard is going to look and you have to find this create credentials button click on it then choose YouTube Data API v3 and then choose web browser JavaScript. Then we need to choose public data and click on the blue button that says what credentials do I need. Now this is going to give you an API key. Copy this API key and make sure you paste this in here. Obviously, I will be removing this after the video uh, so you can't abuse it. <laughs> And uh, one thing that you might want to know is that you can also restrict the API key to specific uh, API address or an app and so on. But for this tutorial, I'm going to leave this and just click done. So we are now done with the API key and we should be able to uh, make some calls to it. And uh, we'll check this out in a few moments. The second thing that we need to do is obviously find the YouTube channel that we want to get the data from. So let's navigate to YouTube and find the account that you want. As you can see, this is my account here, uh, slash Rally the brand, but I don't think that we can use this ID. And to get the ID, navigate to somebody's account. You can use mine, whatever. And uh, you, if you click on videos, it should actually give you the ID in here. So this is the ID that we want to copy after the channel and before the videos. So let's do that. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this in here. So that's perfect. So another thing that you want, you might want to notice is that at the moment I don't have many subscribers but the number is 894. So you can see that the number that we're getting from the API is correct. So let's go back to the project. And also, by the way, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, help me out by subscribing to my channel um, and share the video if you find it useful. So let's go back now. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to select the this class name with JavaScript. So we can use the uh, OD or Meter JavaScript uh, library. So let's do that. I'm going to copy this and let's uh, do it in here. We can do it with, let's say, we might as well do it with const again. So const audiometer is equals document dot uh, query select in this case because we have a class name and it's easy. And this should, this should select the audio meter class name uh, from here for us. And we'll use it in a second. And now we can start writing the function to get the YouTube subscriber account for us. So first of all, let's create a simple function and I'm going to call it get subscribers. 
In this function, I'm going to be using the fetch API and fetch makes it super simple as a default. Fetch uses the get method, so we won't have to do too much. Um, first of all, we need to actually find the URL and uh, the fetch URL, the Google one, the API URL that we are going to use. And I think I found the API, I will paste it in the description below and my blog, but I, th I think I found it in the overview. And then if you go try in uh, API Explorer, or you can learn more. And uh, this gives you all sorts of uh, data on how you can use the API. And I think this is where I found the URL. In fact, this is the URL that we need. So let's grab this and we need to fetch it and then I'm going to use the slanted, uh, I don't know what they're called, but basically they allow you to insert variables uh, into in here very easily. I'll, I'll have to, I keep forgetting what the name is, but anyways, so HTTPS column slash slash www.googleapis.com slash YouTube version three and then we need to access the channels and then we need to access um, parts equals statistics and the id is the id of the channel that we need to access so this will be youtube username and then we need to add the key so key is equals youtube key Okay, this is perfect. And by the way, you can uh, find all this in this link here. Uh, you can see all the uh, methods that you can use and so on. Okay, let's go back to this and continue. The next thing we need to do is then get a response. And then the response will be returned as a JSON, which is very easy to use. And then we need to uh, get the data from the response and let's console log the data to see if it works. So console log. And also, if you wanted to catch any errors, we can do this by putting catch uh, in here, but I'm not going to be doing this uh, now for this video, uh, but you can catch any errors in here. So let's save this. Actually, we need to run this function first of all. So get subscribers, let's run it. Let's save this and see whether we get the API. I'm going to inspect the file, the page, click on console. And as you can see, we're getting an object in here. So if I open the object, we're getting an items array. And inside this items array, we get another object. And this object contains the statistics that we need. So basically, I'm looking for the subscriber count in here. And we can access it under items, statistics, subscriber count. Let's do this. So we can go, let's create a var. Um, let and we can call it a subscription count and then because this is actually uh, this is not a number this is a string we might want to convert it to a whole number so to do this we can do pass int and then and then we need to get the data items select the first object of the tree then we need to access statistics and then we need subscriber count and i think subscriber count is with a capital letter in here ah uh, yes so let's do this and now to use the javascript audio meter uh, library we can simply use the uh, variable that created here, that we created in here to insert the data into the this HTML element. So what we can do is use this audio meter and with a normal um, JavaScript inner 
HTML, we can insert the data and the data that we want to insert is obviously subcount. Okay, let's see what we get. And as you can see, this is working really well. I don't know if you saw the animation, but it's super cool. Um, this is a live number, obviously from uh, YouTube, as you can see in here. And this is so far awesome. Now, the next thing you might be wondering is obviously if we leave this, this is no longer gonna refresh. This uh, will no longer uh, give us the latest details. And because I'm using the free API, I can only make so many calls a day or a month, I think. So I need to be careful of how many times I request this. Obviously I can pay for it, but um, if I'm being careful, maybe we can use, uh, maybe we can check for new subscribers every 10 minutes or so, um, instead of like every second. So let's do that, let's do that next. We're gonna have to run the function first of all, so we get a response straight away and we get a number straight away. But then we can set an interval. Let's actually create create a variable with a delay. So we can do let actually let's do another const uh, delay and the delay is going to be six zero. I think I believe this is ten minutes in milliseconds. Might have to double check there. So ten ten minutes in milliseconds. And let's do the set interval in here. So let's start, it's just like the time that we did above. Let's do a set interval. Okay. And for the interval, we need to add the uh, delay that I just done. We can, to be fair, we can write it in here as well. It doesn't matter that much. So delay, and then we need to run the functions. So for example, get subscribers, and maybe let's run the get weekday as well. So let's let's move this in here where all the functions are. So we can do run functions and then we can run those functions uh, every 10 minutes I believe so let's save this go back to the page and obviously we're not gonna see this now because it's gonna take 10 minutes but if you like I can change this just for a demo I can change the number uh, let's change it to something less than that um, okay it's gonna be okay that's every second now and as you can see this is every second but obviously I don't get so many I don't get too many subscribers at the moment so the number doesn't change unfortunately uh, but this should work this should bring the uh, latest subscribers for you so let's see what we have next the next thing we have is the weather so if we click on weather you will see that we are not getting an icon and and we need to bring the weather so for this i'm going to use another api called open weather map and it's really powerful super and super easy to use so first of all obviously we're gonna have to you're gonna have to sign up for the api it's free and then once you sign up, they will give you the API keys in here. And they will give you uh, the URL that you can request the data and so on. So let's have a look. And also I'm using the free plan, which means that we can do 60 calls per minute, which is fairly good. And three hour forecast, five days and so on. So if you click on API, Basically, what I will be using is the current weather data. But look at this, there you got so much stuff that you can use. So this is what I will be using, API Docs. Yes, here is some of the uh, API calls that we can use, just like we did with the YouTube. And I think for now, I'm just going to be using this, the London one. So let's do that. So basically, let's go, I'm going to copy this, we might as well. Okay. So let's go back to the JavaScript 
and we can do this let's do it let's do it in here get water okay so first of all obviously we need to get the api key okay let's do this one slightly differently let's uh let's just start writing the function and we'll include the api key uh inside the url uh as this is another alternative method you can do whatever is easier for you so let's do a function and this time i'm going to create get weather and then inside here we're going to have to do exactly the same thing as the youtube we're going to have to do the fetch uh, we're gonna have to use the fetch api because it makes it super easy to do and basically let's do fetch the url i've already copied which i showed you uh, but we're gonna need to put http and then slash slash api dot open weather map dot org data 2.5 weather question mark q as query equals london uk and then we're gonna need the api key which i'll show you i showed you how to get uh app app id is equals and this is where i'm going to paste my app id and let me go back to api um, where is it i think i need to go back Okay, this is where my API key is. So this is the one I will be using. And of course, I'll probably remove this later on. Okay. So let's copy this. And we can uh, just add in here instead of having a variable, whatever is easy for you. Now we need to get the response. Just like before. And then we need to bring the data. And let's console log the data first of all to see where it works. And also let's do the catch any errors again, just so you have it. Okay, so we need to run this function as well. And let's go back to the page. And this is the weather that we are getting. So everything looks good. We are getting tons of information. And I think uh, the information I actually want to get, as you can see, you can get like the coordinates, um, humidity, pressure, temperature, yeah, so there is a lot of information that you can get. And also you can explore the API in more detail and see how you can bring the data in, like bring the degrees and all that stuff and so on. But I'm not going to explore that too much. I'm sure that there is like other tutorials online. As you can see, like there is all sorts of stuff in here. But let's see what we need. So first of all, first of all, I'm going to need this weather object uh, to access this weather object. And what I want to get is uh, the description and icon, I think. Okay, let's get the description first of all and see how things go. Okay. First of all, to insert the data into the weather, which is here. For the title, we have weather title and then we have an icon. We're going to need both of them. Let's... Uh, Let's get those elements. So in here, what I can do is let's do const document get. What am I doing? It's a document dot query selector, and then is the uh, weather. Now this was this is going to be the weather icon. So. Okay, and then the next one is the weather title. So let's do the same thing. Comes okay, so that's good. And now we need to get the data and insert it into those two 
uh, divs that we just selected. So let's uh, select the weather title first. Title and the weather title we can do in a HTML is equals the data object dot then weather is what we want to access and this is the first object which you can see in here. So weather and then we need the this object and then we need the the description. So let's do that weather first object and then description. Okay, and then we need the weather icon. Okay, for the weather icon, we're gonna have to uh, wait a second because I actually want to bring an icon for this. Okay, let's see if we get the description first of all. As you can see, we get the description at the moment. So in London, we have a clear sky, which is exactly what we want. And one of the things that uh, we have done on the demo is I changed the image and the image actually ca came from uh, the Unsplash API and I'm going to show you how to do this as well. But first of all, let's see how we can change the icon. And okay, so to get the icon, we're going to use this API again. And when we go under the weather, then object, then you will see that we're getting this icon ID. We're going to use this to bring an icon that uh, that reflects the weather, obviously. And to do this, I found this really cool CSS library called OW Font, uh, and basically it has symbol for all the Open Weather API map stuff. And as you can see, you can see them in here. So each ID corresponds to uh, one of them icons, which is awesome. So first of all, download this. This will download a few files for you, a CSS file, a font, and yes, a CSS file and a font. So first of all, I'm going to, also I will link this in the description below, and I'm inserting the font now, and I've got the CSS in here, downloaded for me. So let's include those two things. So first of all, let's include the CSS link, CSS, No, that's not the one. Okay, and we don't need this. And then we need to actually add a class name to the div that we want to insert the icon. So in here, OWF is the class name of where the icon is going to appear. Um, I've already included the font, uh, which is obviously the font will be the CSS will look to grab the font from the font folder in here and hopefully that should bring the icons for us. So let's do that. This one will be now slightly different. Uh, we're gonna need to insert a class name to this div here. Let's do that, it's uh, super easy. So first of all, let's grab the weather icon variable that we created and let's do let's add class name to it. So to do this, we can do class list add and then we need to get the, we need to add a class prefix of w of 0wf dash, and then we need to get the data, uh, basically the ID that comes up from the API here that I showed you earlier. So let's do that. Uh, that would be data dot weather. And again, we need to get the first object and then we just need the ID. So hopefully, if I save this, we are getting clear sky and we're getting uh, the icon that corresponds to clear sky, which is brilliant. Obviously, you can bring more details like visibility and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we'll, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. The next thing I want to do here is I actually want to bring an image from unsplash.com and let me close some of these things now. So if you go to Unsplash API, dash it, uh, and then if you log in and register, dash it give you an API which you can get all sorts of, uh, okay, log in and 
go to unsplash.com developers and dash it. Uh, and then you need to create an API key to access uh, all this data and the data you can get in uh, JSON, uh, modern JSON and so on. So basically just like what we did with YouTube and the weather, we can do exactly the same thing with the Unsplash stuff. So I'm not gonna waste too much time, but you can go under view documentation and the API is amazing as well. So you can get all sorts of stuff like latest photos, random photos, photos by names and so on. So today, what we want to do is we want to use this string of clear sky to get an image from Unsplash and display here. So basically every time the weather changes, we're gonna have a different image, which is that corresponds to the weather, which is super cool. Let's do that now. I'm not gonna waste too much time looking at the API, so let's just go and do this super quickly. So, unsplash image. So first of all, let's get the, we need to, I want to insert, basically I want to insert this image uh, as a background on this section. So we're gonna need to get the weather ID. Let's do that. And we can do const uh, selector and the query selector that we want is this. Okay. Then let's do a um, function that we're gonna, uh, let's do another function for the fetch method so we can get some data from uh, the Unsplash API. So let's go call this uh, get weather photo, uh, get weather photo so function. And we probably need to, we'll probably need to pass uh, some weather details in a minute. So let's do what the weather is. We're gonna have to pass this, but I'll show you in a second. And then in here we can do const unsplash api is equals and the unsplash api for me I've already copied my key and so on. So what I will do is copy this and I will explain it. So this is the API which you can find under the documentation. And basically what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a photo with my client ID, which is inserted in here. That's your API key. And then let me do that. And then uh, we are only looking for page one, one result. And then we're only looking for one page with one result. And then last but not least, we actually need to query the weather. Uh, so this will be clear sky. We actually need to query this. Uh, and to do this, we need to do and query equals, uh, we can do plus weather. Okay, I think that should work. Uh, but obviously we need to pass the weather and uh, in a second and so on. Now this is looking a little bit ugly. Let's do it like this. I think it's because I've zoomed in so much, but yeah, we're gonna have to deal with it. Anyways, so let's do a fetch. And this time we're gonna fetch this Unsplash API. Then actually let's put this as let, just in case. And um, so we're gonna fetch this and then we need to get the result, the response. The response will be return, returned in JSON format again. And then we need to get the data, just like above the, the, the step that we've done above. I'm trying to rush in now. Now we need to add the image to the weather section. And to do this, we can set an attribute. So we can copy this and set an attribute to it. Uh, weather wrapper dot set attribute. And the attribute that we want to add is style. And the style will be obviously a background image. URL. The URL that we need here is uh, plus. We're gonna need this as well. 
plus data dot results zero dot euros dot regular plus and then we need to close this i think this looks good so basically you can get the if you look at the api this is how it's structured data results the first object euros regular that's how the uh, api is structured structured and then last but not least if you want to do any errors of course catch okay so first of all, this is obviously not going to work at the moment. We need to pass the weather. And uh, to do this, what I can do is use this function in here and just pass the the weather description. So let's do that. I don't have a variable for it. I can literally copy this. This is what we need to pass. So this is going to pass the weather description, which is at the moment clear sky into here. Uh, this function is going to get the clear sky and then we're going to query clear sky and then get a response and then insert a background image into the section in here. And we probably need to uh, do a little bit of CSS. We'll have a look. So let's save this. Did I save it? Save this, save this and let's run it. Okay. This is awesome. This is kind of working. We're getting clear sky with some random image. Yes. Yeah, so far that's awesome. The only thing that I think we need to do is probably uh, cover image cover on this. So if we grab the weather ID, go to the styles. Oh. Did I know style weather? Uh, where's the weather stuff? Okay. I can just do this, I guess. Uh, background, background size cover save and this so the image will look a little bit better than usual and i know we're getting this random space in here but don't worry uh this i think this should work later on when i remove some of the yeah don't worry about this for now we can probably fix this later the next thing that we want to do is do the voice recognition so the voice recognition is not actually it's not so bad to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to write the voice recognition and uh, I'm just going to do, yes, let, let's just begin. The voice recognition that we are going to use is called Anyang. And Anyang, it's really easy to use, like super easy. Uh, you can do all sorts of mad stuff with it, but I'm just going to show you the basics. And also you can use it with any language, which I can try to demonstrate in here. So let's go. First of all, we obviously need to bring Anyang and uh, you can Google Anyang CDN and that will give you some CDN stuff. And I think the one that I'm using is the Anyang Minified. So let's copy this URL, go back to index.html and bring that uh, somewhere in here, so script, oh, no, no, we need it as script source is equals the onion stuff, and then we need to close it, close it. Okay, my typing is getting worse now. I don't know what's going on anymore. Okay. Save this. So now that we have onion, we need to, uh, we can start using it. So we need to, first of all, initialize Anyang. And uh, basically we need to, first of all, check whether we have Anyang or not. And also, let's, I don't know, I'm thinking of putting all the functions uh, in here together just so we're a bit more organized. Let's see if this works. Okay, everything's working fine. So is there more? Maybe we can just grab all of them together. There probably is, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to structure it a little bit better than it is at the moment, but that's fine. It's looking good anyway. So first of all, we need to check, to check if we have Anyang working. And uh, okay, so I believe that uh, um, Anyang is basically written on top of the uh, web APIs and that's the web speech API. 
and um, you can use this instead but Anyang makes it a lot simpler for us and uh, obviously this does not uh, work on all browsers I think Chrome is one of the browsers that works so we might have to switch to Chrome in a second so this is the API that we are kind of using in the background just so you know and uh, the language is supported Anyang uh, the language is supported it's actually like a really big list these are all the languages um, and I can show you some of them how to make that work and also uh, it, some, if uh, Anyang does not work you probably need to run it under HTTPS um, but we'll see how it goes okay let's uh, continue so first of all now that we've included Anyang we need to check if Anyang is working if, um, if it's available for us so for this we can just do if Anyang and then then we can even like uh, do console like okay if this works as you can see this is not working in here so maybe we need to switch the browser to Chrome and refresh okay so let's have a look okay as you can see now I think this is zoomed out so much as you can see now we uh, let me remove this as well as you can see now we have Anyang which is good um, obviously we'll see we might need to so that so far that's good Anyang is working on this browser now the next thing that we need to do is set a few commands to do this we can do a var with command and equals this so what I want to do is I want to create a few functions and one so basically we can create two functions uh, underneath here function one will be let's say home and this is going to be uh, allow us to navigate to the home to the first section of our page and then we're going to make another one called let's say weather and this will allow us to navigate to the weather using the location hash and we can obviously create more and more but to do this first of all let's create a few commands and for me I'm gonna create I'm gonna create something like gorilla hub show home And then this is going to be equals the home function. Then I can create another one, just exactly the same, show home. And this will be again home. And then I can create another one, maybe like gorilla hub show weather. And then that will be Uh, that will be equals uh, the weather function and then I can do the same show weather and that will be equals weather and then you can just like carry on adding more and more but for, for this example let's keep it simple because uh, we've spent so much time on this obviously in here you can add another language and I can I can show you this in a second as well if everything is working correctly so for the home if this runs let's do a console log of um, home so we know that this function is running and then we need to uh, remember that I added those what they could location hash uh, anchor names basically we need to make sure that when this function runs we can navigate to this section and obviously you can make this with pages and so on so uh, what I can do is location doc hash equals and then this is the anchor name then I can do exactly the same thing in here let's copy and paste and this will be weather and I can copy the weather one paste and hopefully if the next thing we need to do is add uh, some of the commands and so we need to do this by Anyang 
dot command add add command and the command that we need to add is the command by the way this is all listed on the api and you can have a look in more detail and then the last thing uh let me comment this add add command and then the last thing is we actually need to initialize uh anyang to start listening so start listening and to do this we can do anyang dot start okay if everything worked correctly hopefully okay let's refresh the page uh usually this would ask you for uh, permission but i think i've already given the permissions uh here i've uh, allowed my microphone to be accessed i'm just going to use my microphone that i'm working on right now and i'm not sure whether this will work but let's just hope for the best done so hopefully as you can see this red icon means that the web page is listening to us right now we have anyang and everything is working so technically speaking if i say one of those commands hopefully we should get it to work so let's try this one let's go back to the browser click this i'm going to refresh show weather and as you can see this is actually the first time and it works straight away so let's see whether it works with show home okay i think it was listening uh to me a little bit but as you can see it's actually working quite well so let's try it again gorilla hub show weather gorilla hub show home as you can see this is working really well um i'm really happy with this obviously we can remove those testing links now so the page looks uh, a little bit more presentable and we can just in fact instead of removing them it's always nice to keep them in here just in case and as i said you can add more sections uh just the way i, I did it and add more good stuff to your uh smart device let's call it that way and um I also promised you that I'm going to show you how to uh, do the language and um, if you go to the language sec, um, set uh, if you go to the github page of Anyang with the frequency asked questions and what languages is supported you will see that um, after each language they've got this uh, this uh, show code for the language so find the one that you want and uh, I can only speak two languages i think almost three maybe uh, i can only speak i can also speak bulgarian so let's do that and to do this it's actually really really easy and let's put it to the test so here in the command obviously we're gonna have to remove the english ones now in fact i'm gonna copy this paste it in here so we can just have it and i'm going to copy this we're gonna have to remove the english ones of course and also we're gonna have to set a language before we do anything to do this you can do anyang dot set language and the language i want to set is bg bulgarian then if we go down you're gonna have to write this in your own language but we can keep the functions uh, in english so let's write this you can write this in your own language and um let's say for home i'm gonna put something like first page so in bulgarian this is prva stranica and as you can see i'm writing in bulgarian now which is really cool and then for the weather i'm just gonna do another one for the weather in here i'm just going to say vreme which means weather i think that would do let's save this and see whether this understands bulgarian or instead i can say second page or whatever let's in fact yeah let's let's see so i'm going to go to chrome again and just in case i'm going to refresh and let's give it a go and by the way let's remove this hash just in case Vreme. 
Purva Stranica. As you can see, this understands Bulgarian as well, which is amazing. And uh, if you remember from yesterday, yesterday was Friday and I had the notification that I need to get the bin out. This is no longer here because today is Saturday. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at what else do we need to do. I think this is actually everything from this tutorial. Uh, it's taken a while to do. I really hope that you liked it and uh, you learned something cool today. Uh, I know it's a little bit long. Please subscribe to my channel, give this tutorial a like, share it with your friends and family and uh, help me grow this channel so I can show you more cool tutorials like this. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Raddy and you're watching my channel, Raddy the Brand. See you next time friends.